Good morning and welcome everyone. I thank all the participants of this third webinar organized by Movendo Technology in collaboration with the Rebiotex. Before starting, I would like to thank Rebiotex, our exclusive distributor for Spain and Portugal, for their strong expertise in the field of rehabilitation technology and for our important professional collaboration. I would like to thank Alejandro Lozana, who will talk today about new technology for the rehabilitation, a UNOVA, a technical view. At the end of the presentation, we will open a question session and you can speak directly with our clinical expert by clicking the red arrow at the top to open the control panel. And below you'll find a series of functions, including the hand symbol. So you have to click it to ask to speak. I now pass the speech to Alejandro Lozana. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, it is, I, I think we, you can see me and you can see the presentation. Uh, so if not, <laughs> tell me. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction. <clears throat> I'm, I'm Alex. I'm a physical therapist. I work in the Instituto de Rehabilitación Funcional, uh, that is a team of neuro rehabilitation on Madrid. And we have there a lot of high tech devices. One of them is uh, the UNOVA, the, posture, the dynamic postural graph, um, and is one which we use more. So the main purpose of being here is about to share my clinical experience with the UNOVA, to share some graphics we can take from it. And also, if we, if we have time, I would want to share a video about what is UNOVA and, and well, a little bit difference between what is static postural graph and dynamic postural graph. So <clears throat> I think it's interesting to start with a, with a definition. I wrote here the Guzman definition of what is posturography. If I, if I would have to, to make my own definition, I would say that posturography is a tool uh, for the evaluation of uh, the outcomes related with uh, the balance. We are talking about the measurement of the vestibular system, the vestibular spinal system, uh, reflex, sorry. We are talking about a measurement related with a somatosensorial system, also visual system. A summary, we are uh, measuring the pressure center and the projection of that center of gravity. And we are making things. We are making uh, exercise with uh, a platform unstable. We are making perturbations and all this information about this pressure center will give us uh, information about how is uh, this system which we, we were talking about. So the first posturographs were commercialized in 1968, but uh, <clears throat> there were more evidence uh, behind that. And after that, so uh, the first posturographs uh, were designed for the astronauts uh, because in the space <clears throat> you don't have that somatosensorial system. You have to uh, keep your orientation with your vestibular system, also your visual system, but you won't have that somatosensorial input. So the astronauts need to train their vestibular system, also somatosensorial visual system, after and before the, the travels. So <clears throat> uh, that was the beginning. And now we are using it for, for, for patients. Uh, this is a picture of the UNOVA. <clears throat> As we said, uh, the posturography uh, works by the detection of the displacement of the pressure center. And um, this is a really interesting question because can we measure the vestibular system <clears throat> on with a posturograph? Um, there is a really, really huge difference between the dynamic and a static uh, posturographs uh, because the vestibular system works with linear and, and angular accelerations. So uh, in a dynamic posturograph, we can emulate these accelerations with unstable planes and also with perturbations. And <clears throat> with a static uh, posturography, we cannot uh, simulate this. So um, in the other hand, uh, when this exercise, when we are doing this exercise, 
uh, we will always have somatosensorial inputs from the pressure receptors of our food and also the receptor we have on the joints. <clears throat> and it's impossible to put apart the vestibular system from the somatosensorial system. But we can, uh, thanks to a dynamic uh, posturograph, we can put more effort on that vestibular system. I think all of us know uh, the, the Wii Fit from Nintendo in Spain became really, really popular. Also in the clinics of rehabilitation, orthopedics and, and, and neurologics. Um, nowadays, um, I think there's a unless a few center which use uh, which already use with it, and the reason is that isn't a device from rehabilitation, and and well, uh, the outcomes we can get uh, are are um, are less. Okay, so uh, as we said, uh, somatosensory system, vestibular system, and visual system are the structures related with the with the balance and uh, i would want to share a video i will speak be behind the video i will stop in some points to explain to explain how those works the unova <clears throat> Okay, first stop. <laughs> um, now the, uh, you will see this is the UNOVA. Uh, the main difference between uh, this device and other posturographs, we can see uh, that is the chair. Okay, we have a, a robotic chair. I said earlier that, that uh, we use uh, this device with a lot of patients. And the main reason why we use with a lot of patients is because uh, we can uh, use uh, this device in a sitting position. Uh, the same exercise we can do in a standing position, in bipodalic or in monopodalic, we can also do it on a sitting position. So in patients which are not able to keep a standing position or who can't keep a standing position for more longer than 10 seconds, is a really, really interesting tool. Um, also, uh, for patients who can keep a standing position, but you want to work with a trunk, uh, we will see that uh, we can work the, the trunk stabilizers and also the proximal stabilizer of the hip. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a tool for evaluation, also for research and also for treatment. Okay, second stop. Uh, here. I think you can see my mouse, the mouse. No, no. Well, uh, we see that um, the black thing, uh, the physical therapist is setting on the trunk, is the, um, the sensor of the trunk. When we are doing your exercise, we are not just measuring uh, the center of presence of the platform, we also measuring the compensations of the trunk, okay? Uh, if we focus on the screen, we can see uh, that there is an avatar on frontal plane and on sagittal plane that will give us information about how is the trunk. So it will help the therapist and also the patient to give uh, instant feedback. And if the compensation increases more than 50 degrees, it will also give us uh, audio feedback to say us that we are doing a lot of compensation, okay? We will see later uh, some graphics about what is the outcomes related with the, with the trunk sensor. Now, uh, the physical therapist is adjusting the chair. <clears throat> we can use the, the the tablet for the control the device or the or the tactile screen. And third stop. <laughs> okay. Um, now we see that we can use a knee stabilizer and also a sandal that um, 
fits with with the foot and what's the what's the objective of it uh, we can do passive mobilizations we can do active mobilization we can do exercise of strength i'm talking about isometric isodynamic isokinetic exercise and well as you see this is an interesting tool for uh, orthopedic also patients so uh, we are talking about a patient who has an ankle fracture who needs to increase uh, that range of motion of the ankle and that strength okay it's not only a tool for for neurological patients <clears throat> now we see a passive mobilization this is a tricky exercise it's quite similar to the wicked ones but with a dynamic platform you have to reach some some objectives <clears throat> yeah, many areas of application of this device we will talk it later. And there are different levels of instability. Um, it's like different feelings you will have when you are up in the platform on in the chair. There are three, the elastic and stability, fluid and stability, and also proprioceptive. There are like feelings you have uh, during the exercise. And for example, proprioceptive is the harder one. <clears throat> now we we'll see the sensor isn't in the trunk. It, it's now on the, on the leg. Uh, it's on the leg because it will be monitorizing uh, the, the flexion of the hip and the knee to focus that the squat or the lunge is, is doing well. This is really interesting exercise on Parkinson patient. We use a lot on our Parkinson patient. It's a dual task exercise. You have to do things on the screen and during you have to keep the balance. <clears throat> Obviously, the, the physical therapy would be also behind the patient. We don't leave the patient alone. <clears throat> this is a monopolic exercise. And we can see now the feedback the device here. <clears throat> So, I will go to the last exercise. This one is really interesting because we use the chair. This is the one exercise of evaluation or treatment in the seat to stand chair. Now we see the feedback, the real feedback with the, with the trunk sensor, and we will see before uh, the graphics about it, what are the outcomes we get from it, okay? So this is UNOVA, and as we see, uh, this is another way to to measure, well, to, to tell what can we measure. We can we measure the postural control, the balance, the different systems we talked about earlier, and uh, postural adjustments. And uh, now uh, I would want to show you some graphics, uh, some real patients' graphics. This one uh, belongs to a uh parkinson patient and this uh, exercise of evaluation would be an exercise which we ask the patient to keep a standing position and the platform will be unstable so <clears throat> uh, this is in spanish <laughs> the the right one i think no you can see the mouse well the left one is with ace open the right one is with a uh, ace closed as we see, the black line means the trajectory during the trial. You have to do uh, 30 seconds uh, keeping a standing position. And the gray area, the gray circle, is the mean of the area coverted with, during the ace open and ace closed uh, exercise. As you see, with ace closed, we, we, we don't use the visual system uh, for the balance. So 
the parameters uh, are worse comparing the days open. We will see later if it's normal for this patient or not. Um, this is uh, another uh, graphic from the same exercise. We have on the left side the graphic of uh, is open, right side the, the graphic of is closed. The red line, uh, well, this is in Spanish. <laughs> the red line means the medio lateral uh, displacement. The um, uh, blue line means the anterior posterior uh, movement. And uh, as we see in in is uh, closed, we have more movement uh, of compensation. This is the the measurement of the of the platform. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now uh, this box with whiskers are uh, the normality uh, parameters. Uh, the 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 blue ones are is open. The gray ones are is closed. As we see uh, with this patient with ACE open, we are close uh, to the normality parameters. Um, the left one is the area coverted, the middle one is the um, uh, length of the trajectory, and the right one uh, is the root mean square of the distance. It's more complicated to explain. Uh, let, we, let me stay in the right one and the middle one. We see that in both, uh, when we close the eyes, we we are doing really, really worse. We are too far from the normality. And that what means? That could mean that when we doing exercise, we, uh, for balance exercise, we are overusing the visual system. So it suggests us to do some exercise without the visual system or, for example, we can do double task exercise where we making a distraction to train uh, the other two systems uh, related with the balance. Okay, this is the same, but the trunk outcomes. Okay, we see uh, the same the same order. The uh, left one is the range of oscillation to anterior posterior. Okay, the forward and backward, <clears throat> and we see the same. The, with A's closed, we have more compensation with the trunk. So, <clears throat> same conclusions. Here we have a table with the quantified data. Uh, this is interesting for, for reading on the, on the anamnesis, but also interesting for research. Uh, here we have the values uh, and, and the range of normality, so we can quantify how much or how far are we uh, objectively from the from the from the normality, and also we can measure uh, how how is improving our patients. <clears throat> this is the same table, but with the not with the platform, uh, with the sensor of the trunk, and all of this was one exercise we do in one minute. Uh, we will see the summary uh, version, uh, an abstract of all this uh, later. Okay. This is another interesting exercise. This is the reactive balance exercise. In this case, we have to uh, make a, a, a stay in a standing position, and the platform will make some perturbation on the left side. Uh, the uh, the left uh, graphics uh, we are seeing the the right perturbations. So uh, we are seeing that is in normality uh, parameters. They took the time you have to uh, spend to go back in a standing position. Okay, there is a perturbation, and the time you uh, need to go back in the in the uh, in a straight position again. And we we see that in forward uh, perturbation we are too far from the normality. So we have another some some data interesting to orientate the treatment. <clears throat> this one is a really famous uh, graphic, the limits of stability. I think all posturographs have it. <laughs> um, and you have to reach some goals forwards to the right and to the left side, also in backwards. In this patient, this is barely, barely normal, it's barely okay. If we think uh, on a stroke patient with a right side hemiparetic, the cross wouldn't uh, arrive uh, to the goal. It would stay just more close to the middle, and 
again, is an interesting tool to see how does improve our patient loading the weight on the, on the let's see, bad side. <clears throat> Here uh, we have the last exercise we have seen in the, in the video uh, I shown I earlier. Uh, in the in the left side, we are seeing the the trajectory of the center of pressure, and in the right side, we see a graphic that calculates the mean uh, time we have to spend. To uh, the the darker one is the mean time uh, we are in a standing position during the test. The gray one is um, the mean uh, we the the mean of the time we spend in a sta in a sitting position, and the the white one uh, is the mean of the time we have to spend in the transition from sitting to standing. Okay, it's like <clears throat> it's quite similar to the stand up and go test, but with our walking and with more data. <laughs> so um, there are around I think four. The 40 exercise of evaluation, uh, I brought here around four. So we have a lot of possibilities. This is a standing exercise uh, in bipodalic, but we can also do monopodalic and in sitting position. So uh, what are the fields of physical therapy we can apply? This is some research and pilot study that were publicized uh, in the neurology field, as, as I say during all the webinar. Uh, neurology field is a really, really interesting field to treat with the posturograph, and we are using a lot uh, <laughs> with our patients. Uh, but also is interesting uh, in the traumatological field and also in geriatrics. So, um, why is interesting in geriatrics? Uh, you might know that there is uh, a lot of risk of fall in, a, in elder people and um, or, um, um, uh, or uh, traditional ways to measure it are not too much uh, precise comparing uh, a posturograph. So uh, UNOVA has developed uh, like a cluster of tests. Uh, there are five uh, posturograph sets and uh, a quick uh, other test that me that his name is Silver Index. Okay. Uh, the other question you have to do uh, to, to do the cluster of tests is uh, how much uh, previous files you have uh, you have had in the last year, what is your age, and the six meter walking test. And then the posturograph test is the static balance and balance on elastic platform, which is the first graphic we have seen. This is the same patient, okay? The stability limits, uh, which you have to reach, uh, well, uh, we have shown the graphical, so you have to reach some goals. The raptic balance, we have already seen also, and the sitting for, uh, uh, to standing test. So in 20 minutes, uh, we can, uh, we can do all of these tests and uh, instantly we take uh, the percentage of a risk of that patient. So in this case, with this patient, we have a high risk, um, high risk of fall and we have a lot of uh, parameters uh, uh, in, the, in the graphic of the, um, of the right side that um, give us information about what are the um, points we have to work with this patient. In this case, we have to work a lot the seat to stand uh, transition. We have to work also the gait speed, the limit of stability and the reactive balance. So <clears throat> the UNOVA will suggest us some exercise with their priority and also with the difficulty suggested. Uh, we obviously can customize it. We can use uh, a traditional exercise in, in the clinic, but is 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 really precise and is really interesting the exercise that uh, you know I suggest. So uh, it um, sincerely make the work easily. <laughs> um, well, we say we saw that. Uh, you know, BA is a really interesting tool for treatment and also for evaluation. But I also 
wanted to share uh, that we are using it now from research. We are now, well, not now the, the study is freeze because of the coronavirus, but we are now doing a, a research uh, using the UNOVA as a tool of evaluation. And we are looking for um, uh, how uh, does improve the balance, the motor imaginary training, also the action observation training, comparing the real uh, training. It will be one of the first studies that we will be glad if we have no difference between groups. And, and well, I think this is <laughs> this is this is all the the presentation i hope wasn't too much boring and i'm sorry because i know i i mean i might commit some grammar mistakes <laughs> but i hope everything was understandable so if anyone has any question uh, i will try my best to ask the webinar is over uh, let's now open the question session and i remind you to click the hand symbol in the top right hand corner between the functions below the red arrow to ask to Aleandro. We wait for your questions.